Hi everyone, so I thought I'd do another NHS Fleet Solutions uh, video, this time just uh, demonstrating how advantageous the tax system is for leasing an electric car through salary sacrifice. Because of course with either car you're going to save money on tax, pension and um, uh, national insurance. Um, but why um, is it so heavily promoted for EVs? Well it's all because of the tax regime. So you uh, plug in hybrids used to get uh, a lot of this benefit and still do, but less and less. Uh, the main tax benefit is now for pure EVs. Um, so let's show you uh, a comparison of the electric owner versus the one litre turbo, both in ultimate spec, uh, and see how much you can save. So first we have the EV. So this is the advanced, this is the new, uh, it's not the ultimate, uh, this is the basic uh, full range new Kona. Uh, and what they would do is the gross cost is £500 a month for lease, but you are saving. Uh, I think some of the figures are wrong here, aren't they? Oh no, oh, no mind. Anyway, I'll shut up. Uh, you're saving £200 a month on that, and your monthly ta tax liability, because uh, essentially you're allowed to sacrifice some of your salary uh, to get a benefit, and that benefit is a car, and so you're taxed on that benefit uh, because obviously they're losing all this. And so what they've done is they've set up the benefit in kind, uh, different levels for how polluting your vehicle is. Uh, and if you are driving a zero emission, at least a tailpipe car, uh, certainly not zero emission to make or to make electricity, although it's quite low, um, which is the whole point, you're getting a benefit in kind tax, which is currently 2%. Um, and this may well go up after um, we have full adoption of EVs, clearly. Um, so this is what it's like for the petrol Kona. So now we're looking at the petrol Kona, uh, which is more expensive despite being the cheaper car. Um, you're getting, uh, because it's more expensive, you're getting more savings on the tax of what you pay on your income because you're paying with pre tax income rather than post tax income, so you're saving a lot of money still. But that is replaced by a much higher benefit in kind rate. So it's 2% for EVs and it's 20 something, 22, 24% for petrol cars. And so this is a one litre turbo um, and is therefore you lose all of your benefit almost, don't you? Um, and so your total cost is very similar to what the pre-tax um, cost would be. And so you're, you're not saving anything this way, which is why so many salary sacrifice, business cars, etc. are EVs and not um, petrol cars or diesel cars anymore, which is fantastic uh, for helping us all get in clean, quiet, efficient, greener cars. Um, but why are we not supporting the private buyer, buyer market anymore? Uh, I guess that's a question for the previous Conservative government, but the current Labour one now. Do you want to reintroduce um, the grant that I got? Um, it was previously 3500 uh, when I bought mine, I think it was only 3000 it's been reduced a bit. After that, it was only 3000 if for cars under 30000 or 35000 And then they deleted it because they thought that the market was growing enough. Uh, and then after they deleted it, uh, there was a huge inflation price spike in everything. I mean, everything went up. Um, and so that market has struggled to keep going in the private market space. Um, and since loads of manufacturers are now struggling uh, to sell any cars and offering huge discounts on EVs to avoid the fine for not meeting 22% uh, target for this year of a uh, proportion of cars being EVs, uh, then they're offering huge discounts. They're going to get a 14 grand fine for each petrol car they sell over and above their 78% and so if they sell, sell one over that, and so 78.1% or 78 plus one vehicle, they'll be charged for it. 